All right, guys. Happy Friday. Um, make sure everybody is muted. And if you want to show your camera, you can. If you're in the challenge, I encourage you. Um, any request? You can unmute your mic if you have any requests. This is Vinyin. So we'll vinyasa, we'll power it out, and then we'll slow it down and um, stretch. So if you guys have any requests, anything, any body parts that you need, let me know. Yeah. Jackie, can we do balance? Yeah. Yeah. Balance and hips? Yes, please. And my neck. I don't know if there's any other thing that we can do to work on that. Okay. My neck, too. Tension, tightness, jaw. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? Jackie, can we do some balance poses? Yeah, we'll do balance. We'll get right into balance, right? Great, thank you. Core, Brandy, you're not you're not brave enough to announce it. Uh, I keep trying to, I keep getting cut off. <laughs> core, please. So core, balance, neck. Too many snacks. Yeah, get that core. Yeah. You want food? We'll try to work it off. That's true. Okay. All right. So let's start. Um, Let's start on our backs. If you have something, um, like Brandy said, a child or a husband that you want to mute, you want to lay on to open up the chest, you can, or a pillow or something like that, you can do that too. <laughs> and so then just lie on the back, on your back. Close the eyes, bring the arms out wide. So the chest just opens a little bit more. You're outside, maybe look up at the clouds. I practiced outside the other day and it was amazing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And it's warming up, so you got a little bit of heat. I'll tell you, I'm really excited to teach in air conditioning. It makes me happy. I don't have to take a million showers a day. All right, so just settle in. Let's take a side breath. So deep inhale through the nose. And then just open your mouth, sigh it out. And then let's close the mouth and just start to notice the breath as it enters the nostrils. Try not to manipulate or control the breath yet, but just notice where your breath is, where your pranayama is right now. I talk a lot about in my classes about how the breath is really like the glue to the practice. It's what brings you into the deeper layers of the practice. It's what keeps us present. It's a tool in our toolbox that we can come to when we're feeling anxious or tense. So I challenge you, you know, it's, it's, it's hard practicing at home. It, it's got a lot of bonuses, but it's also hard to be accountable. You can back out of the poses quicker. So just notice, notice what comes up. Try not to get judgmental, try not to be hard on yourself, but just notice the difference of practicing at home versus the studio without judgment, without creating stories around it. And, you know, for me, it brings me into a deeper state of concentration. I'm more aware of the distractions. I have three dogs, a cat, a child, and a boyfriend that desperately need my time 24 seven nowadays, it seems like. So distractions, they're all around. But the practice of yoga isn't to do, diminish distractions or eliminate them because that's not life. Life is what it is. It can cause challenges, obstacles. But the practice of yoga is to learn to balance, to manage the distractions and to stay in the discipline of the practice, which is slowing the fluctuations of the mind, being in the moment, even if it's in the fire or in the opposite, the boredom, the slowness, the stillness. We usually struggle more with one. We struggle with both, but more so with one. So now let's start to deepen the breath, inhaling through the nose. Now, if that's unavailable to you for any reason, then just breathe in and out of the mouth, but just be aware of the breath. Make it a conscious choice, a conscious breath, and then exhaling out of the nose. Notice where the tension is in the body. 
neck, shoulders, jaw, probably all feeling a little bit there. Inhale. And exhale. You know, even if you think that you're not stressed or buying into the fear, it's all around us. Deep inhale. So that energy very subtly seeps into us. So just notice it. Exhale. Don't let it define you, make you or break you, but just notice and start to work through that. Use the tools in the toolbox. So Ujjayi breath has a slight constriction in the back of the throat. If you want to come into that now, feel free. We're going to take about 10 more breaths here. And utilize this space to create the rhythm of your practice, right? So the breath is what governs your movements in a vinyasa practice. Yes, the teacher's here to guide, to suggest, but the, really the movement has to be with you. It becomes a rhythm, a dance, and the breath is the, the leader. So about seven more breaths, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling, closing the eyes, maybe holding that focus on the third eye as you're breathing into that space. Inhale. As you exhale, let the tension, the tightness, the stress go with it as you release it back out into the ether, out into the world. Again, inhale, five more. Exhale. Four, inhale. Exhale. Three, inhale, exhale, for two, inhale, exhale. One more breath we're going to hold. So inhale. Hold the breath at the top. Take one more sip of air in. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And then open your mouth, sigh it out, stick your tongue out, get everything out. Let's do one more lion's breath like that. Inhale through the nose. Stick the tongue out, sigh it out. Now close the mouth, remove anything that's beneath you, your child, your husband, your wife, and hug the knees into the chest. Tuck your chin here, so get a nice length in the spine, and then lift the legs up towards the ceiling or the sky. Flex the feet, press the heels up, engage the belly, again, retuck the chin. Take a breath here as we stretch the back of the legs. And then point the toes, stretching through the front of the legs. Really engage the feet, stretching through the ankles. And then let's rotate the feet in one direction. And reverse it. Crack, 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 crack. And happy baby, reach for the back of the knees or grabbing inside or outside of the feet. But don't force the pose. Keep the spine on the mat. Keep the head on the mat. Tuck your chin. Pull the knees down as you pump the heels up and press the small of the back into the mat. Take three breaths. You're still breathing. The rhythm of the breath hasn't changed. We're just adding some movements. We're adding the asanas. Two more. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Hug the knees into the chest. Let the left leg go long. Take the right knee into the body when removing pose. Maybe you hover the left leg, activating the core. And pump the right knee into that ascending colon. 
activating some metabolism, some digestion. And then take that knee, release the left leg, take the knee across the body. So final twist. Gaze or your drifty is opposite direction of the knee. If you have the playlist, go ahead and start it now. One more breath. You already started it, that's okay as well. It's your class, it's your flow. And then release onto the back, hug the knee into the chest and switch it out. Hover the right leg though as the left knee comes in with removing pose on the other side. Descending colon, pump it into. Deep inhale through the nose. As you exhale, release the right leg to your mat and cross the knee over the body for a final twist on the other side. Two big belly breaths here. Deep inhale. And exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly onto the back. Both knees come into the chest. Begin to rock and roll forward and back. We'll stand forward fold at the top of the mat. It's called Uttanasana. Yeah, maybe feet are together, maybe they're hip distance apart or a fist distance apart. When you get there, grab opposite elbows. Now notice where you are in your feet. We want to create balance in life. So it starts with the parts to create balance in the whole. So check out with the feet. Spread the toes nice and wide. Find the big toe and the pinky toe ball. Find the inner part of the heel and the outer part of the heel and press all four points equally into the mat. Inhale, lift up through the soles of the feet, activate the legs, engage the core, protect the lower back. Give your head a little shake, yes and no. Let's end with a great big yes, yes, yes. And then rock back into the heel, see if you can lift the toes. And then rock into the toes, see if you can lift the heel. And then again, find that balance point, lift up through the soles of the feet, just activating your foot bottom. One more breath, deep inhale. As you exhale, release the hands. Remember, it's perfectly okay to bend the legs here. We're all gonna bend our legs as we roll up and stack the spine, vertebrae. The head will arrive, continue the arms up overhead, look up in the hand. Exhale, draw it in through heart center. Again, inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, draw it in, heart center. One more like that. Inhale, look up overhead. Smile at the sun if you're outside. Exhale, heart center. Close the eyes, tuck the chin, set your sankofa. Your intention. As you're setting your intention, root your feet into your mat. These are your roots so deep in your soil and the space that you are in right here, right now. Be there. This is the practice of yoga. So when you're ready, blink the eyes open, inhale the arms up overhead. As you exhale, fold, fold. Inhale, flat back, let's talk about this pose. Rest the hands on something, your block, your pillows, your books, your shins, your legs can be fine. And bend the legs, think of straight spine. The pose is called flat back. So nice strong straight spine, engage the belly, knit the ribs in. Think of pinching something between the shoulders. And then exhale, fold. Two more there. Inhale again, flat back. Again, bend the legs if needed. Hands can rest on the shins. Exhale, fold, fold. One more time. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands on the mat. Step the feet back, downward facing dog, taking an upside down beat with the body. So first dog of the day, do what it calls you to do. Get some movements in it or find stillness if that's what you need. Spread the fingers nice and wide and plant them all onto the mat, even that space between the index and the thumb. Straighten the arms, press the mat away from the hands, the butt will lift up towards the sky. Press the heels down towards the earth and bend the legs as much as you need to. We're all gonna walk our dog here, so bend the right and bend the left. And then inhale, come up high on the toes. As you exhale, drop the heels over to the right. Maybe look up and under that left arm, exaggerating that side body stretch. And then inhale again, back high on the toes and drop the heels over to the other side. Again, taking that gaze up and under the right arm. 
Inhale, back high on the toes as you exhale. Bend the knees as if you were hovering your child's pose. The arms stay strong and straight. Take a breath. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Take the right leg up. Yawn and open. Bend the leg. The foot drops. The knee lifts. Circle the knee out. Take big or tiny circles. You choose. Keep the arm strong and straight, especially that right arm. Reverse the rotation. And then inhale, straighten the legs, square it up. Exhale, bring it in, knee to nose, round the spine. Inhale up, right knee towards the right tricep, shifting forward, think of plank. Dragon pose, release the foot to the outer edge of that mat. You can stay on the hands or you can drop down to the elbows. If you want to bind, you reach behind and grab the foot. Most of you guys know where to go. If not, choose one of those. See how it feels and breathe into it. Now, I like to challenge the foot. Instead of bringing it out at a 45 degree angle, can you keep the toes at 12 o'clock and root through the big toe? You're going to feel the inside muscles of that leg and the hip really start to activate and open up. So breathe into it. Two more breaths. Ujjayi strong breath. One more breath. Bring your hands back to the mat. Heel toe the foot in. Framing the front foot. Curl the back toes. Lift the back knee. High plank, but can you lift the foot up and back? High plank pose. Arms are strong and straight. Inside creases of the elbows forward. Press the mat away, getting out of the shoulder blades. Gazes forward and down. Take a breath. Exhale, knees to the mat, lower chest, chin. Inhale, top to the feet, to the mat, cool, repose. Roll the shoulders left, down, away from the ears. Squeeze the elbows towards one another. Let's see if we can remove our hands and stay lifted. Take a breath, inhale. As you exhale, curl over the toes, downward facing dog. Hips high, heels low, take a breath. Inhale, the left leg up. Yawn and open, bend the leg, the foot drops, the knee lifts. Tiny circles or big circles, you choose. And reverse. Inhale, straighten the legs, square it all off. Exhale, bring it in, knee to nose, round the spine, tuck it in. Inhale up, left knee, left tricep, think plank. You can always drop the back knee if it's too intense. Drag and pose, release the foot, outer edge of the left hand. Whatever you did on the right, go ahead and take here. So again, maybe keeping the toes at the 12 o'clock position versus turning them out, rooting through the big toe, the inside seam of the foot. Just a little different experience here. Two more breaths. One more breath. So same thing here, bring the hands to the mat, heel toe the foot in so you're framing the foot. Curl the back toes, lift the back knees, press the hands into the mat, see if you can lift the foot up and back. High plank pose, two breaths. Try not to let the chin fall below the shoulders, right? Keep integrity in the spine. Neck is long, chin is out, gaze is forward and down. Next exhale, lower down, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hips high, heels low. One breath in through the nose. Out of the mouth, let it go. Inhale, look between the hands. As you exhale, step, hop, or float, pull forward at the top of the mat again. This time, let's interlace the hands behind the back. Try to squeeze the palms towards one another. Straighten the arms up and overhead. Remove the wrinkles in the back of the neck. So forehead reaches towards the shins. Rock a little bit more into the toes, engage the belly, focus the mind by concentrating on the breath. One more. And exhale, gently release the hands down. Inhale, flat back, fingertips to the shins. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come up, nice big breath. Circle the sun, especially if you're outside. Give it some gratitude. Exhale, heart center. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back halfway. Exhale, step or hop it back into low plank or knees, chest, chin option like I'm taking. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. If you're wanting to modify the practice, just look up at the screen for the next sun sound. 
Inhale, look up between the hands. As you exhale, step, hop, or float, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, fingertips rest. Exhale, fold, root to rise. Inhale up, nice big breath. Maybe go back. Exhale, draw it in, hard center. Two more. Inhale up, I'll modify. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, halfway. Exhale, step or hop it back, low plank. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog or tabletop. Inhale, look between the hands. As you exhale, step, hop or float, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, maybe bend the legs. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, inhale up, take it back. Exhale, heart center. One more sun sound. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back, halfway. Exhale, step or hop it back, low plank. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice job. Inhale, look between the hands. As you exhale, step, hop or float, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Inhale, up. Nice big breath. Draw it in, heart center. Close the eyes. Find that stillness. Again, root your heels into your earth. Grow nice and tall. Heart is open. Chin parallel to the mat. Focus on that third eye. Maybe feel that heart pulsing. All right, blink the eyes open, inhale, chair pose, let's sit down. So notice, notice if you're feeling it in the lower back, you're probably compressing. So see if you can just so sit back into the heels, engage the glutes, and then see if you can lengthen that tailbone starts to press down. And these little hip points in the front start to come up. So compress down and lengthen, right? Arms can be up. Now, if your shoulders are real tense, bring the hands to heart center. Don't add more tension into it. Drop a little lower. Breathe, smile, deep inhale. One more breath. Nice, exhale, fold forward. Left hand stays under the chest. Right hand comes high, bend the left knee. Look up, try to stack the shoulders and reach the crown of the head forward instead of the way that you're twisting. Right, so long spine, kind of like a corkscrew. And then switch it up, right hand comes down, left hand comes up, bending the right knee again, trying to stack the shoulders. Instead of bringing the head over to the left, bring the head forward, lengthen out and twist, reach up. Both hands come down. Inhale, flat back, halfway, set the left foot back, right low lunge, release the back knee to the earth. Inhale, your arms come up overhead. As you exhale, cactus the arms and take your back extension. If you feel compression, root through the back knee, and lift up and out of the lower back. Hands come to the mat, straighten the front leg, half monkey, fold over it, flex the foot. Reach your chin towards your shin, look at your toes, take a breath. As you exhale, rebend the front leg, standing split, fold over. The back leg lifts off the mat, it doesn't matter how high, just lift it off. If you wanna balance, grab the ankle with one or both hands. If you wanna invert, hop up, it's just two breaths. One more breath. Let's bring both hands to the mat. Square off the hip. So level down that hip that's in the air. It's the left. Bend the standing leg and start to rise up into your warrior three. Virabhadrasana three. Now shoot energy through the heel of the back foot. Engage the core. Everybody take your hands to your butt and see if the hips are level. If they're not, inner rotate the leg that's in the air. Bend the leg that's in the air. Let's pulse it. Five, four, three, two, one. Standing up for tree pose. Foot comes to the inner leg. The calf or the thigh omitting the knee. Breathe. Equal pressure. The foot's pressing into the thigh as the thigh presses into the foot. And then lift up and out. Fly your branches. One more breath. Hands to heart center. Coming back through warrior three. Shoot that leg back. Tap the foot behind you, pyramid pose. Both toes facing the front, folding over the front leg. Root through your back heel. Press through the big toe of the front foot. If, key word here, guys, if you want more, interlace the hands behind the back. You can stay here. We have three breaths. If you want more, Superman. Bend the front leg and you take that warrior three stance as you're diving down. It's in between warrior three and standing split. Two more breaths. 
If you fall, gladly pick yourself back up and come in. One more breath. If you're flying, everybody release back down into that pyramid pose. Left hand stays to the earth, shift the torso forward, revolve triangle. Notice what happens to the front foot, press through the big toe, root through the back heel, lengthen the spine, one more breath. Arjunasana, half moon, rocking forward, the right hand comes to the mat, block, book, baby, husband, cat, dog, hamster. We lost our hamster, got out of the cage and never returned. That was kind of weird. One more breath. There's a dwarf hamster somewhere in the house. And then revolve, half moon, left hand comes down again, level off the hips. I know the right leg's burning. I'm practicing here with you, which is a new thing for me. Stack the shoulders. Breathe, lengthen the leg that's in the air. Get it up, guys. Flex the foot. One more breath. Fold forward, top of the mat. Leave that right leg where it is. Just experience it. Don't react to it. Take a breath. Inhale, flat back halfway. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, inhale up. Nice big breath. Exhale, draw it in, heart center. Inhale, chair pose, sit down. Exhale, draw it in, heart center, twist to the right. Left elbow hooks to the outer edge of that right leg. So drop your butt down. Drop it back. Pull the opposite hip. It's the left one back so they're in line. Press the palms into one another. Try to stack the shoulders. Deep inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, draw it in, heart center, twist to the other side. Again, drop the butt back and down. Press the palms into one another, lengthen through the spine, engage the core, breathe. One more breath, deep inhale. As you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back halfway. Step the right foot back, left low lunge, release the back knee. Inhale, the arms come up overhead. As you exhale, cactus the arms out to the side. Root through your back knee and then lift up and take your back extension, opening up through the heart. Take a breath. Exhale, you surrender, you soften, you let go within the pose. Inhale, hands come to the mat. Straighten the front leg as you fold over and exhale, half monkey. Look at the toes, reach the chin towards the shin, take a breath. Are we breathing? Are we still here? Are we still practicing yoga? Slowing the fluctuations of the mind. Inhale, re-bend the front leg, standing slitter knee, fold over, lift the back leg up. Now again, you choose grabbing the ankle or pressing up. Two more breaths. One more breath. Let's bring both hands to the mat and square off the hips. So lower the leg that's in the air and then bend the standing leg and rise into your warrior three. Try to lengthen. Think of a string being pulled from the crown of the head and that back heel. Tuck the belly in. Bend the leg that's in the air. Let's pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. Warrior three. Extend, extend, extend. Tree pose. Come up standing. Foot comes to the inner side of that leg. So the calf, the thigh, omitting the knee or your half lotus. It's three breaths. Equal pressure. Foot and leg into one another. Rising up out of that. Fly your branches. Two more breaths. One more breath. Smile, everybody. So hands to heart center if they're not already. Come back through warrior three. Keep that leg extended. Just release the right hand to your blocker, baby. Lengthen through the crown and twist. Tuck the belly in. Flex the foot. Revolve half moon. One more breath. Both hands to the mat. Both feet to the mat. Pyramid pose. Folding again over that leg. Now again, if you did on the other side, attempt it here. Interlace the hands behind the back, but switch up the grip. Opposite pinky on the outside, feeling like you're holding someone else's hand. If you want more, taking that Superman in between your warrior three and standing split. Move with purpose, so it's slow, it's focused, it's intent. One more breath. Nice job, guys. Release the hands and the feet coming back into that pyramid pose for revolve triangle. Right hand stays to the earth, block or baby or husband. Shift forward and revolve. 
Pull your front hip back like you're squeezing the inner thighs together. And then root through your back heel. Breathe. One more breath. Look down at the front foot. Fly into your half moon. Left hand comes down. Opposite hand comes up. Flex your foot. Press through the big toe of your standing leg. And maybe that leg is even bent. But the leg in the air, it's straight. It's engaged. It's working together. One more breath. Pull forward at the top of the mat. Keep that left leg where it is. Just relax into it. Deep breath. Inhale, flat back halfway. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Inhale up. Nice big breath. Exhale, draw it in. Heart center. Inhale, the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back halfway. Step or hop it back high to low plank. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, elbows to the mat, dolphin pose. Now, if dolphin pose is too much, don't check out the practice. Stay in down dog. Work down dog so you can create the restfulness there and get into the more intense pose of dolphin. So walk the feet a little closer to the elbows. Hug the elbows in. You're wrapping the triceps. The gaze is slightly forward. Space between the head and the mat. You're breathing. Two more breaths. Ujjayi breath. One more breath. Now see, at the same time, can you straighten the arms back into down dog? Nice job, guys. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank pose. Exhale, low plank pose. Inhale, high plank pose. Left hand comes to the center. Take your bashi, side plank. So stacking the body. We tend to send our hips up towards the ceiling. Can we stack this? So pull the bottom hip under. Work your obliques. Lift the hips up, but stay stacked. Hand that's in the air, extend it forward. Let the palm face down. Activate your legs. Squeeze them together. One more breath. As you exhale, high plank if you want, low plank. Inhale back up, high plank. And then right hand comes into the center for side plank. So again, even if you're dropping the knee, try to stack the hips, not open up. So pull your bottom hip under. Breathe, hand that's in the air, bring it forward, palm faces down, knit your ribs, squeeze the inner thighs together, lift up, up, up. One more inhale. And then exhale, everybody low plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, child's pose, just a breath. Inhale through the nose. Out, exhale through the nose. Inhale, Ustrasana, camel pose, right into it. As you exhale, set your hands up. Next inhale, move into the pose, hips forward, heart up. Avoid the head falling all the way back. Keep the chin slightly tucked, gazes forward. Two more breaths. One more breath. Slowly lifting the torso back up, separating the feet, grabbing the block or the prop that you're using, and sit down between for hero pose. It's just three breaths. If you're taking half of the expression, take half now. We'll take the half in round two. Two breaths. One breath. If you chose to go back, walk back up. Take the hands out in front, downward facing dog. Curl the toes, lift the hips, relax the heels. Inhale, the right leg comes up high. Exhale, bring it in, knee to nose. Inhale, right leg high. Right knee, left tricep, hold it. Arms stay strong, gaze is forward. Extend the leg out, but hover, 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 hover. Release it down, fall in triangle, left arm reaches up. Take your back extension. Take a breath, inhale, lift and lengthen. As you exhale, left hand comes down, right leg back up, three dog split. Exhale, bring it through, crescent lunge, foot drops between the hands, take the arms up overhead. Deep inhale. As you exhale, draw it in, heart center, take a twist. Come high on the back toes. Press the palms into one another, keep the spine long, keep that back leg long. Inhale, back up through, crescent lunge. Little funky here, we're gonna take Skandasana towards the back, so left leg bends, drop down. You want to take a bind, take a bind. If not, just keep the hands out in front. One more breath. If you have the bind, go ahead and release. Wide-legged forward fold. 
Those of you that want to invert, one of two times of our inversion. So invert here. If not, walk the hands through. Rock the weight into the toes. Pull the torso through the body. Take three more breaths. Come back to the breath, guys. Two. And one. If you're up, make your descend down. Wall, walk the hands towards the front. Windmill the arms up, warrior two. Deep inhale. As you exhale, go into your fire. Reverse the warrior, back hand, back leg. Exhale, side angle. Five breaths here, binding here, birds of paradise option. Wherever you choose to go, be there. Don't back out early, focus on the breath. Four more. Three more. You're taking birds of paradise. Pull that right shoulder back. Try to square everything off. Two more. If you're flying, start to make your descend down. If you're binding, release. Let's take one more breath together. Warrior two, stay in the fire of that leg. Windmill the arms down to the mat and take a flow. High toe low. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take a breath in through the nose, out of the mouth, let it go. <sighs> Tap the knees to the mat, who straps in a camel round two. As you exhale, set the hands up, set the pose up. Next inhale, press the hips forward, lift the heart up, get right into it. No doubting, no hesitating, no thinking about it. Three more breaths, inhale. Two. Engage the glutes, slight engagement of the core, pressing the feet into the mat. Last breath. Slowly rise back up, separate the feet. Round two, hero pose, virasana. Three breaths. Slow it down. Two. One. If you're all the way back, start to walk the hands up. Take the hands out front, downward facing dog, into the other side. Inhale the left leg high. Exhale, bring it in, knee to nose. Inhale up. Left knee to the opposite tricep. Stay strong in that left arm specifically. Get it up, up, up. See if you can extend the leg out. Hover it, hover it, hover it. Fall and try and release the foot. The right arm expands up. Take a breath, deep inhale. Exhale, let it go. And then take that hand down, left leg back up, three-legged down dog. Exhale, let's bring it through for crescent lunge, Anjane Asana. Deep inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, draw it in through heart center, take your twist. High on the back toes, lengthen through the spine, press the palms in. Inhale, back up through crescent lunge. Skandasana on the right, bend. If you bound on the other side, take your bind here, two breaths. Focus the mind by concentrating on the breath. Close the eyes if you're getting distracted. One more breath. If you have the bind release, the hands come back down. Warrior two, windmill the arms up overhead. Inhale, reverse the warrior. As you exhale, side angle, five breaths, taking your bind or birds of paradise on the other side. Again, wherever you choose to go, be there. Four more breaths. Three. Two. Focus on that breath. If you're flying, release. If you're binding, release. One more breath, deep inhale. Warrior two, inhale. As you exhale, windmill the arms down to the mat. Take your flow, high to low. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, child's pose. Slither forward for puppy pose. Drop the chest and lift the butt up. Bringing the chin or the forehead towards your mat. Breathe. Three. Two. 
And we'll Let's press back for child's pose. Bring the knees together this time. Fold over, round through the shoulders. If you want to take rabbit, grab the heels and lift the butt up for three. If not, you're just in child's pose, breathing for two. But you're still in the practice. You're still with us. One more. Go ahead and release. Bring the hands out in front, downward facing dog. Let's all try it. That's one of the good things about practicing at home is we're more probably able to try things because we're less fearful of looking silly. But looking silly is all part of the practice, right? You have to look like a fool to become a master at anything. So separate the hands. You have some books you want to put your hands on. Be careful. Rocks. Kids, again, um, I come up onto my fingertips. Just add a little bit more space. I look between the hands. Let's bend the legs and see if you can hop right on into your boat pose. Just try it, guys. Try it, try it. Woohoo! One day you'll get it, I promise. It's like magic. All right, low boat. Keep pulling that string up, right? So don't collapse on the shoulders. Stay strong and long in these intercostal muscles, right between the ribs. High boat. Low boat. High boat. Low boat. High boat. Three more. Low boat. High boat, two more, low boat. High boat, exhale it up, inhale, low boat. High boat, stay, three, three, lift. Try to straighten the legs, two, and one. Low boat, and then lower down, lift the legs up. Go ahead and sit on the palms. I want you to pay attention to the lower back here. You don't want it arching, so try to keep the connection in the small of the back with the mat. Sitting on the hands helps alleviate some of that, all right? If you want to add the arms, just be mindful that you don't overstretch the spine, right? So inhale, lower. Once you feel the back start to arch, you went too far. So bring it back up. Find that space for you. All right, exhale, lift. Good. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Make sure you're breathing. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Two more. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. One more, hold. Flutter the feet. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift the legs up, happy baby. Tuck your chin. Press the back of the head in. Close the eyes. Three. Feel that fire in the stomach. Feel the energy there. Slow down enough to get in touch with the subtleties of what energy feels like. You can feel the heart beating. You can feel it in your fingertips sometimes. One more breath. All right, legs back up. Hands this time next to the butt, palms face down. So you want to be directly up and down. You don't want the feet above the heart or the chest, right above the hips. And then when you're ready, you're going to just pulse towards the ceiling. So directly up and down. Try to avoid any movement forward and back, right? So, Keep pumping up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. You all know that's a fake number, so let's try it again. 10, 9, keep going though. 7, 6, 5, 4. We can do 10 more. Come on, 10, 9, 8. Keep pumping. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, release the feet, bridge or wheel. Don't think, don't hesitate, get into it. Come on up, three breaths. Try to get the feet forward, 12 o'clock again here. Hug the knees in, press and lift up, two breaths. One breath. Slowly release down, hug the knees into the chest. Close the eyes, tuck the chin, breathe. Two more. One more. And extend the legs long. Let's roll on to our stomach. 
We'll take the right arm directly out to the side. If you want a little more, you can bend the arm. So the arm would be at like a 90 degree angle. The most important thing is you wanna make sure your head is supported. So whether it's on the mat, excuse me, or a block, you just want it rested so the neck gets a break. We don't create more tension. So go ahead and roll into that. Close the eyes when you get there. And just like we start our class and we end our class, can you surrender into it? Can you settle? Can you find that stillness, that kind of center of peace within you? We all have it. It just has to be cultivated. It has to be brought into awareness. And then it has to be practiced to stay there, to be there, to not allow ourselves to continue to always be distracted. But to have a little bit of control. Right now, that's all we really have is control over who we are, how we react, how we respond. We can't control anything outside of that. And if you can learn to manage the discomfort, the challenging practice of being in a position for an unknown amount of time, you could practice that on your mat. It makes it a little bit easier out there in the world to be less reactive, more empathetic, more compassionate, more understanding, and just more in touch with feelings, with the emotions that we feel throughout the day. So if you've lost sight of the breath, bring it back. We have five more. The practice of yin is all about cultivating complete and utter stillness. And just like anything, the practice starts with the most tangible part. That's the physical part. And as you find that stillness, avoiding the fidgeting, the moving, the mindless tapping and wiping, that practice, that energy seeps in deeper and deeper. Eventually you're physically still, but you notice something different. A sense of stillness within, a sense of stillness within the energy, within the thoughts. It takes a couple minutes, sometimes 30, 40 minutes of a class to get into it. Sometimes 5, 10, 15 minutes of meditating to get into it. It's like this battle, this tug of war that happens and even you surrender or the ego surrenders. So slowly come out, release that arm, take the opposite ear, which is the left ear to the mat and just take a breath. You might feel some warmth in that shoulder. And then take the left arm out and let's repeat. So again, if you bent the arm, bend the arm here. If not, keep it out straight. And roll into it. Just make sure your head is completely supported. Breathe. Relax your jaw. Maybe stick the tongue out. Get any tension out of there. Often our jaw is the center or the first part that tenses, that holds the tension and then it seeps into the back of our neck, our shoulders, our back. But relax the jaw. And breathe. I find myself breathing a lot these days very frustrated, very tense. Lots of changes, lots of things happening going on that we don't understand, that our children don't understand. So that frustration has reminded me that I have the tools. I know what to do to stay calm. I know what to do to stay in my center, to stay in my peace and be the good mom, the good wife or girlfriend. And also is remaining true to myself. I don't like when I yell. I don't like when I get frustrated. I don't like when I lose control of my actions. So I'm constantly breathing. Reminding myself that this will pass. Reminding myself that everybody's feeling different emotions and different things at this time. All processing 
and projecting or reacting differently to it. When people are stressed, their shittiest version comes out. One more breath. Slowly release again out of that. Take the opposite ear, which is the right ear to the mat, and the arm next to the body. Take a couple breaths. One more. So we'll bring our hands next to our chest and just press back into a child's pose and then come up to a seated position. So just sitting on the back of the heels. Take the left hand and just put it underneath your left shin or left ankle. The right hand, reach it up and grab the opposite ear. Let's just pull that right ear down towards the right shoulder. We're going to take five breaths here. Close the eyes. Focus on that third eye. So keep the concentration. The brain needs something to focus on so it's not running rampant all over the place. Four more breaths. So give it that breath. Give it that mantra or that intention that you set. I am here. I am still. And Gail says, I am in perfect health. One more breath. So I'll just drop that chin down towards the right clavicle, getting a stretch in sort of the back of the neck. If it's too much sitting on the shin, then release the left hand. So one more breath. Stay nice and tall through the spine. Don't collapse in the shoulders. And then release and come into the other side. So right fingers under the right shin, left hand hung. Reach for that opposite ear and just pull the left ear down towards the left shoulder. Stay nice and tall. Try not to dump. Right now I'm dumping, right? I'm sitting in my lower back. So sit the sit bones down, hip points up, just like you would be in a chair. Four more. You might feel some heat or fire coming out of that neck, inflammation, tension, tightness, blocking the flow of energy. You create headaches, all sorts of different symptoms. Two more breaths. One more breath. And then drop the chin down towards the opposite side. Stay nice and tall through the spine. Breathe. One more breath here. And go ahead and release. And just kind of shake the hands out, maybe rotate the wrist, and just give the head a little shake or a little roll, I should say, not a shake. That would be weird. And then reverse the rotation. Lots of cracking and creaking around there. All right. All right. Mandukasana. You guys should all learn that one. That one's frog. That's a fun one. So definitely, especially if you're outside, um, cushion up the mat. Hot dog style is my favorite, which is the long way. Some people prefer the hamburger style, more of the shorter way. I like the long way because then I can go deeper into the pose if my hips are feeling flexy today. So I pulled it a couple times. Inside of the knees to the mat. Make sure you got my better side facing the camera, not the back side. All right. And then coming on to the elbows. A lot of people tend to sit back. You really want your knees as wide as they can go so the hips are in line with the knees. You're going back past the knees, like sitting down like an actual frog. You have more flexibility. You can widen the knees and get deeper into it that way. And then create a 90 degree angle with the feet. So you want the ankles in line with the knees and the knees in line with the hips. And then to go even deeper, neutralize the pelvic area. So lift up through those hip points. Nice, strong, long spine versus dumping in the lower back, right? So knit the ribs, relax the face. And then we're here for a little bit. So once you've settled into the position that you have chosen, you're going to be there. Hold your breath. Now, when you start to fidget, that's you wanting to come out. That's your ego saying, get out of here. This is uncomfortable. 
but you are going to stay in the fire and you're going to create peace and calmness by breathing deeply into those feelings, right? not reacting to them, not moving out of the pose because it's uncomfortable, but saying, yes, I know it's uncomfortable, but I'm here. I'm now, I'm going to do this. And it's a discernment between discomfort and pain. You never want to feel pain. So if you are feeling that, obviously come out of the pose. But discomfort is a huge part of life. A huge. We're noticing it right now. Buddha says the root of all of our suffering is from being attached, our attachments. So if we can manage, again, our discomfort here in a, a pose, in a safe environment, our heart is safe. Hopefully it gives us the skills, the tools to manage the discomfort out there in life, to be in it instead of running from it. We don't grow, we don't evolve when we run from our pain, when we run from our problems and our tribulations and our challenges. We grow, we evolve when we face them, when we breathe through them, when we remain open through it all to see the deeper lesson, the deeper meaning, what it is we're experiencing. Three more breaths. Two. And one. Slowly come out gracefully as you can. Taking a moment to reset. And then taking pigeon. So you can take pigeon normal, laying on your stomach, taking it or on your back. Or if you want to go a little deeper, I personally think 90-90 is a deeper expression and you're getting both hips at the same time. So I'm going to guide us through 90-90, but feel free to take whatever you want. Pigeon, supine, or prone. Um, so 90-90, the shins are stacked. And it's important that the feet are off of the legs. We don't want wide legs. We want it in line with our hips. So the ankle is stacked on the knee and the knee is stacked on the ankle or the shins are stacked. Even if your knee is up a little, that's okay. You can just use a little bit. Here, sit up nice and tall. So we'll start it now. Relax the shoulders and the jaw. Close the eyes. Focus on that third eye. Focus on that intention. So this is the powerful part of practice. We've moved the energy. We hopefully created a little bit of heat. Release some toxins, both physically in our body and mentally in our thoughts. And now is the time to slow down to absorb it. It's like that runner that runs and never takes the time to stretch. They get injured. The yogi that only does the vinyasa is missing the nurturing, the love, the soft, the gentle part, which we all need. It's easy to be that for other people. It's harder to be that for ourselves, to take the time to truly, truly nurture ourselves. And this is a great time to do it, being at home. Maybe a little more challenging because you have a lot of distractions and a lot of new things that you're not used to. Being home with your family 24-7 can be challenging, I'm sure. Or maybe that's just me. But breathe, right? Breathe. That's my mantra. Breathe. Be here now. You know, yoga is not an event. It's not like you practice it. And you're like, okay, cool. I got patience. Let's move on. All right, cool. I got empathy. Let's move on. It's a practice. You know, like my teacher, Brian Kess says, whatever you feed and nurture and pay attention to grows. Whatever you don't dies. That's a person, a plant, an animal, but it's also thoughts. It's also energy. So if you're not practicing it, you lose it. It's a daily practice. Yoga goes way beyond what we're just physically doing with our body. That's creating lessons and opportunity to check into how we react and respond. This is the practice of self-realization. This is the practice of going inward. This is the practice of yoga. 
Two more breaths. One more breath. And slowly come out of the side and move right on into the other side. And notice that the tension has creeped back into the jaw or the shoulders and just relax it. That's the beauty of awareness, right? Through the practice of awareness, anything is possible. That's what enlightenment is, it's to turn the light on, to be aware, to be aware of our habitual things that we do day after day after day. The best example I have is one again given to me by Brian Kess, my teacher. He says, you know, the nail biter. He's biting his nails, doesn't know he's doing it. He wants to stop. So he puts hot sauce on his nails. He's going through his day, he goes to bite his nails. He now is enlightened. The light has been turned on because his mouth is burning and he realizes this habit that he's doing. So he now has the choice to either continue, wipe the hot sauce out and bite the nails, continue to feed that habit, or to choose a different path, to be aware of that and know that it doesn't serve him anymore and to stop doing it. And eventually, once you feed that pattern over and over again, that's the habit you created, that you replaced with the habit that no longer serves you. Simple in words. Discipline in practice. Three. So what are you trying to cultivate right now? Are you trying to work on something new? Are you trying to let go of something old? Maybe a combination of the two. And it's important to remember that we're completely perfect right here, right now, in this moment. We don't need any working. But our deeper self, our truer self, knows that we're on this planet, we're living this life, to work through the lessons, to learn the malevolent qualities of our heart, of our soul, love, compassion, empathy, acceptance, forgiveness, These are the qualities that open a heart and bring joy and happiness and peace into the world. These are the teachings of most of the peace leaders. One more breath. And slowly come on up and out. And we'll make our way into our final resting pose. I encourage you all to say, this is the most important part of practice. Those of you that take my class every week know I stress this more than anything. And think about it this, you know, a lot of people are A-type personality and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to be somewhere in 10 minutes. It's five minutes, five minutes. That's all we have time for today. It's not gonna make or break anything in life, but I guarantee this, if you spend the five minutes right here, right now, letting go, surrendering, trusting, that this practice is gonna benefit the rest of your day and the rest of your weekend. You're gonna have a beneficial practice, more beneficial than if you were to roll your mat up right now and be somewhere in five minutes. Five minutes. Out of 1,440 minutes of our day. So deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out of the mouth, let it go. Again, inhale through the nose. Out of the mouth, let it go. Now release the breath. Lie onto the back, just the same way we started our class. Soften the eyes, the brows, the limbs. I encourage you to take Shavasana in silence or with the noise around you. But if you want, put the Shavasana song on. It's usually the last song. And I'll bring you out in a few minutes.
your throat chakra. Color is blue. Hopefully you can hear it. Clear communication. Being able to express our true feelings. a passage from Melody Beattie. Resentments only hurt ourselves. Not true. Resentments can hurt others too. When we brood and allow resentments to brew and fester, we send negative, mean, hurtful, spiteful energy to others. The more consciously and vividly we do this, the more pain we cause to everyone. The more bonded we are with others, whether they're business, friends, lovers, or family members, the more powerful our resentments can be and can impact them as well. So if you're busy thinking resentful thoughts about someone close to you or on the job or at home, consider the harm you're doing him or her. The more powerful the emotional connection to these thoughts and the closer you are to the person, the more damaging the resentment is. You can sabotage the other person, help keep him or her down, even if you don't speak your resentments aloud, even if you try to hide the way you feel, the energy is there in the air, hurting both of you. Just as we focus on clearing the air we breathe of toxins, we need to cleanse the air of us around us, at work, at home. Remember when we harbor hate, jealousy, or rage, we connect to others in that way. Let's set others free. Let's release our resentments. Along the way, we'll set ourselves and our hearts free too. So thank you yogis and yoginis for showing up this whole week and being so supportive and being here together moving through this strange time. And I think more than ever, we have an obligation as yogis because we have a different sense of awareness, a different way that we walk through life to remain that sense of peace and remain that sense of calmness for all of those around us. We can stand in the fire and know that we'll be okay. 
So go out there. I encourage you. I challenge you to be the change today and every day. But be the change that you want the world to look like. Be that person. Don't talk about that person or talk about others for not being that person. That's being part of the problem. Watching the news, being part of the problem. Be something bigger. Be educated, be informed, but stand in your truth. Namaste, yogis. Namaste. Namaste.